So uh, these are just taken directly from the uh, PowerPoint slides that I've posted, but I thought perhaps you'd like to see these. So I'm going to go ahead and just walk through the important parts. Okay, so these are your review terms. I would assume that you would know by now raw material, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, work in process, finished goods, cost of goods manufactured, as well as cost of goods sold, which we've covered. So um, we'll start here. Okay, so this shows you that direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead can be applied to the individual jobs. So direct material and direct labor are applied to the individual jobs as they occur, and then the manufacturing overhead jobs or the manufacturing overhead is applied at the end of the period, as shown here. Okay, so the thing. So obviously you know now how to um, estimate the predetermined overhead rate. That's the POHR that you see right here. And it is always divided by the cost driver, which you will always be provided. It's typically direct labor or manufacturing overhead. So you'll take the total estimated manufacturing costs. Those will also be given to you and divide that by your cost driver, whatever your cost driver is that they tell you. That includes both the fixed and the variable portions of the um, estimated overhead. Okay, so this is where life gets kind of fun. So the um, The idea here is that the material purchases, the direct labor and manufacturing overhead all go into this account called work in process. Um, these are all inventory accounts found on the balance sheet, but the purchases you can see, the labor and the manufacturing overhead go into this work in process as they're being processed. And then of course, once they are finished, they moved into another balance sheet inventory account called finished goods. Once they are sold, they move on to the cost of goods sold for those items that are sold. So this is just a general flow of how the costs work. I think that's important for you. All right, so you can see that as things are incurred, then they move. So a material purchase comes into raw materials, but then as it gets used, any of the indirect portion of the raw materials would go into a manufacturing overhead applied or um, actual account. Now, one thing I want you to notice here one thing I want you to notice here is that under manufacturing overhead, I usually create a T account. I like this as an example because the actual manufacturing overhead, right, those things that are actually incurred go on the left-hand side. Those manufacturing overhead items that are applied once the jobs are complete appear on here. So that's gonna be really important for you to keep straight in your head as you go to figure out what is over applied versus under applied manufacturing overhead and you'll see that okay so next slide so here you can see that the direct materials will go directly into the work in process whereas those indirect materials screws glue what have you go into the manufacturing overhead okay this is all going to make sense to you okay same thing with wages right? So the direct wages, like the factory workers and that type of thing, that direct labor will go into that same work in process account, whereas the indirect labor will go in, do you see that, under the manufacturing overhead right here, okay? And then you can see as manufacturing overhead gets applied, the amount based on the predetermined overhead rate is a credit, which goes as a debit into the work in process account. Okay. So, and as I mentioned before, as a job is completed, it goes from the work in process account, which included, based on the previous entries, the direct material, direct labor, plus that amount of manufacturing overhead that was applied based on the cost driver and the estimated manufacturing overhead. Okay, it becomes a credit, so that amount for that job becomes a credit and moves over to the finished goods as it gets finished. And that kind of makes sense if you think about it. A car that's being manufactured is either in process or it's done. So once it's done, then it moves from being in process to being done. 
Okay, so this is kind of the overview. Once it goes into process, all of those things that go into making the car, for example, would go from, you know, go into the work in process. Once they're completed, they come out as a cost of goods manufactured into the finished goods. Once they are sold, they move out of finished goods into the cost of goods sold. So I particularly like this slide because it overviews all of that. Okay, and this just shows you again kind of more of a graphic view of what's in here, but it also includes the uh, finish, the beginning inventory for finished goods, plus those things were, that were moved in, minus those things that were moved out, and that becomes your cost of goods sold. So that's the complete overview. Okay, and that is again just another example. However, now we've included the selling and administrative, which never gets included up in here because this part right here is the manufacturing costs and this part down here are what are called the period costs, selling and administrative, never included in the manufacturing costs, which you probably know by now. Okay, now this is the tricky part is that the manufacturing overhead, again, as I re as I pointed out before, the actual material, uh, indirect material, labor, and other overhead, just various things, which will be given to you, will be listed at the actual price on the left-hand side, which is your debit. As they get applied, they move out as overhead that's been applied into another account. But then the balance is what we're going to look at next.